they can be helped. Uh, and this is um, accredited training which will give people a qualification to add to their existing qualifications. And we have also produced fact sheets for a number of um, uh, professions such as teachers, health visitors, uh, magistrates and so on. Um, and by doing this, it means that, for instance, uh, in schools and children's centres, there can be um, signs up saying, um, if you're affected by imprisonment, uh, um, we can help you in the following ways. Or there can be books um, in schools which take it for granted that some people have children in prison. It can just be part of the normal discussion. So this reduces um, the stigma, makes people feel more able to disclose, and also can help to reduce bullying because it's seen as um, a more normal thing. Thank you. Please. Um, uh, Owen Gill from Bernardo's in the UK, but I wanted to talk about work I've been um, uh, recently associated with uh, in, in Africa, in, in, in Uganda, Kampala, because we haven't heard, we've heard very little about um, African countries this morning. Um, I've been doing some work with a, uh, a small and very inspirational um, uh, school for the children of offenders set up by uh, a, a man who himself had been in prison, and the thing that they emphasize is understanding the community aspects of what the children's experience are and and just three uh, three or four just kind of exa uh, examples of that the, the kind of situations that they talk about and the children and the parents talk about and um, in, in relation to to a rights agenda the first is that uh, it's not uh, in that situation, it's not only a question of what, what is happening in the schools, it's whether children get any schooling at all, because, because of uh, children getting, uh, moving, uh, moving after imprisonment, because of stigmatization, uh, a lot of the children they're working with Microphone, please. Is, uh, sorry, the microphone's... Uh, it didn't work. Is it? Um, so a lot of the okay, uh, uh, a lot of the children haven't had any schooling. So the, so that's the first point. They're actually providing schooling. So and out of that, the 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 right is uh, the children in this situation ought to have a right to schooling. Um, they also uh, issues uh, has been touched upon about finances because uh, with no kind of uh, form of state support. The, the mother who is looking after children in that setting um, will uh, be in, in some ways forced to move to a new partner uh, for support and that partner may well reject the children and so we get again into the situation of the incredibly important role of grandparents in, in, in this and so the right of grandparents in this situation to be to be receiving support um, and the, the the final issue that they uh, uh, highlight is the uh, a number of the children have parents on death row and they work hard the school works hard to make contact between uh, to, to facilitate contact between the children um, uh, the children and their parents on death row so I think we need to be thinking fairly specifically about the support and the specific rights of children in that position. But there's a more general point that, came, that has come out of the, the work that uh, we've been doing with Wells of Hope, and that's the importance of community research, looking at the impact of imprisonment in particular communities uh, and in particular settings. And uh, uh, they, uh, in, in that setting, uh, they uh, are not aware, and I'm not aware, of research that has been taking place in in, in that, in that uh, specific community with those particular, uh, particular children. So it's something about community-specific action. Okay, thank you. And uh, the gentleman there, and here, and, uh, and, and here, and there. Four, and I have to close the session. <laughs> okay, please. Thank you, Chairman. Jan Wetzel, Amnesty International. One aspect which we think should uh, be given specific uh, um, attention to is the impact on the children of the type of sentence and the reasons for detention of the parents. Uh, here, I would like to uh, 
um, focus on the death penalty, as pointed out, and specifically on the secrecy surrounding detention on death row and execution in some state parties to the CRC. I will summarize here, but uh, there is a written statement with me and at the back of the room and at the back of the other room for further elaboration. When Article 9, Paragraph 4 of the CRC speaks of incarcerated parents, this includes convicted persons detained on death row. Amnesty International has documented that several state parties to the CRC, uh, in several state parties to the CRC, death row, death row inmates are not informed of the forthcoming executions, nor are their families or their lawyers. Sometimes not even the bodies of the executed prisoners are returned to the families afterwards. This means that a child does not have a chance to say goodbye nor, uh, neither to the parent while still alive nor at a burial in proper respect of religious beliefs. Uh, Amnesty International would like to invite the committee to consider whether Article 9 in fact contains a right to information uh, not only to the death row inmate, but also to the family and specifically the children. Information such as the fact of a pending execution as such, the potential of the execution, the date, to allow a last visit or communication with the prisoner, if po possible, in person, and to return the body to the family for burial or to at least indicate where the body is located. Um, furthermore, the, uh, uh, as has mentioned, been mentioned before, the committee may consider whether um, a practice of, of uh, secret executions and non-return of uh, the personal effects and the actual uh, uh, body could be a violation of the Articles 12, 14, 16, and 37 of the CRC, as well as Article 2. Uh, international standards on the use of the death penalty require transparency and publicity about its use. This, has, uh, this is part of the 1984 safeguards, but has also been mentioned by the Special Rapporteur on extrajudicial summary and arbitrary executions, as on various occasions by the Human Rights Committee. Uh, most recently, in an individual communication uh, on Kyrgyzstan in March of this year, where it was said that uh, information about the use of uh, the death penalty is in the public interest and an individual right to access to information does exist. Uh, for present purposes, I would like to encourage the committee and recommend to the uh, committee to consider whether such a right to information is con uh, contained in Article 9 as well. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Massimo Benoit Torsegno from IAF, Italian Association of um, Lawyers for Minors <coughs> and Families. I'd like to raise the case of a situation where a minor is the victim of an act committed by the parents themselves who are detained or accused, and also in the case of conflict within a couple uh, when one accuses the other of committing violence against the child. How can one preserve the link uh, relationship between the parents and the children in the best interest of the child and how can a child can how can a child intervene in the procedure involving their right to be heard? Thank you. Thank you. Please. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, please. Grandma. Uh, I'm Helen Horton from Dublin, and um, I want to just mention the situation in Ireland because uh, we have a very serious drug uh, abuse problem, and as a result, in the visiting areas, there are glass barriers between the um, uh, the sentenced person and the family. And uh, this, of course, contravenes all the things that we've been saying all morning, the need to hug your baby or whatever. Um, uh, and uh, I would love to know more about uh, how other people cope with the drug situation. Um, I have a suspicion we haven't talked about drugs at all, but um, that it is a worldwide problem and um, uh, one that's very difficult to keep out of prisons as well as everywhere else. 
personally, as a result of this, I believe drugs should be uh, legalized. Uh, but maybe that's beside the point. But there is also the issue uh, that comes up a few times, and that is uh, visiting rape victims, uh, rape uh, rapists. Um, many of the children uh, refuse uh, to visit their parents who have been accused of this, I think quite rightly so. So I think we need to have a little extra um, comment on the whole issue of rape and violence to children. Thank you. Uh, uh, this gentleman first, and after that, this gentleman, and you will be the last speaker, because after after uh, one, we will have no translation. So I have to pick <laughs> the time. Right. Uh, Kun of uh, Morning Tears. Uh, over the last 13 years, actually, Morning Tears had uh, the unfortunate privilege to, to assist ab about nearly 300 children through the, the process of execution to that penalty of the parents. Uh, we have been looking two years ago, actually, which children come through this process well and which not, and there are, what are the factors, actually, that can make a difference. Um, what we learned is that uh, children who are informed that helps be informed beforehand and they know that an, an execution took place or will take place. Also very important is that uh, the child knows beforehand that uh, after the execution the child will still be safe and uh, will be well cared for. And also something that helps very much is actually if there is a, a, a last contact between the, the, the parent and the child and, and if possible an, o, of an extended time actually. So of course we would like to recommend um, that uh, the state parties take this into account. Thank you. Thank you. Angus Mulready, D.D. Jones, President of Rights and Care Trust. Um, it's just touching on a couple of the points that were raised at the start of the discussion. Um, one is about access to information of, of children and how best to tell them. I think that, that in, in, each, in each jurisdiction there should be accurate, age-appropriate information available to parents or carers in the community about what and how to tell or give, the, uh, give children um, information about their own situation. Because I think without that information, children will find it very difficult to, uh, to even, even know what their needs are, let alone um, have their needs met. Um, I think there's an issue around older children and access to visits, particularly around a, um, in, in the UK and I know in other places the Ministry of Justice has a particularly old-fashioned view of, um, of family structure and insists on over 18s um, accompanying children to, um, to, to establishments and so in, in many cases teenagers, while they can take themselves to school and, and home again and to their friends' houses, they can't take themselves to visit their parent, and particularly if the other parent has some ill feeling between, between um, them and the incarcerated parent or there's, there's ill feeling between the, or the caregiver and the community and the incarcerated uh, parent. Um, and the other point relates to some, some issues that were raised a, a, few, uh, a few minutes ago by various speakers around the um, treating each case um, as, as an individual and I think that's a, that's a fairly valid point. I think in order to do that, um, support services for children are often based in locally funded organisations, local authorities, local government organisations, um, wh which are not in the same uh, funding stream as national based uh, criminal justice agencies. And so I think that there needs to, or the, the committee needs to look at how information about need gets from one to the other while respecting the, the family's right to privacy. Hello. My name is Hanne Kristoffersen, and I represent a Norwegian NGO called the Organization for Families and Friends of Prisoners. Our organization has for many years stressed the need for good routines and solid structures in order to secure that a child perspective is integrated into the con correctional service system's daily work. We are happy about the fact that both politicians and the Department of Justice in Norway in recent years have shown an increased attention to the situation of children of incarcerated parents. The Norwegian Department of Justice is these days preparing for a law that shall ensure that the child perspective is integrated into the routines and attention of the correctional services through the establishing of child ambassadors or child officers 
in every prison in Norway. A part of their mandates will be to make visiting conditions more child-friendly. For Norway, it has been very useful to look to Sweden on this matter, as they already have established child ambassadors in their prisons. Our organization is also taking part in a Scandinavian initiative where one of our, aim, our aims is that all correctional service agencies in our countries establish child officers or child ambassadors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a very short intervention to pick up on the, the comments that have already come out about children being informed. Concerns have been raised within our organization, not only that children be informed, but that they be informed about the truth and not given fantasies, lies, stories, and other, yeah, mistruths. So there should be a clear statement that, that inform yes, the information should be there, but also they should be informed about the truth of their circumstances and not allowed the psychological space to fantasize. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, nearly to, 12, uh, to 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. So I suppose that we, we will stop here. But uh, before, before you going out to have lunch, I think that uh, you should think about all some issues to resume our discussion in the afternoon. The first one is that if the parents still be in prison, how can we uh, make them to pay more uh, laws and responsibility as a parent, even if he, he or she is in, in, in the prison? Second one, are there any other uh, less tolerative justice or alternative justice that uh, can make the parent stay with children outside the prison? And the third one, even if we cannot use the alternative justice, can we use classical justice such as probation? suspend uh, the the sentence or any anything like that mm -hmm. that we, we should discuss in the afternoon to to make it clear then we can make a good uh, recommendation have a good lunch thank you very much come back again see you again at 3 p.m thank you